I've built well over 100 gaming computers at this stage and played for thousands of hours, so I know a thing or two about PC gaming. There is no doubt that this is the ultimate platform for all things video games, with crazy high frame rates, super mega ultra wide displays, and the ability to create some truly mesmerizing gaming computers. But I think it's fair to say that there's quite a bit of stigma around the platform for some, with PC gamers often being viewed as quite snooty, and the platform being for those with big bulging wallets only. But in reality, this just isn't the case. I promise we're all a big bunch of friendly nerds here, and darn proud of it too. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all of the quick bits that I've learned in the last 10 years. To help you get into PC gaming, avoid the common mistakes that a lot of people make, and then give advice on the things that actually matter when it comes to gaming computers. And let's start simple with PC gaming. Is it actually for you, or should you stick to console? This is a huge topic in its own right, but in a nutshell, the PC is a different kind of gaming machine. The main pro is that they're fully customizable in terms of both looks and performance so you can always tailor the experience to match exactly what it is that you're looking for. You want to play Forza Horizon at 4K max settings? No problem. Apex Legends at 240 frames a second? You betcha. Mass Effect Andromeda on the most ridiculously wide monitor you've ever seen? No freaking sweat. No, wait a minute, it's Andromeda. No one wants to play that. You also get access to a properly powerful PC, so suddenly everything that you do for work or leisure gets a massive kick up the bum not to mention the ability to do these tasks while you're gaming. But hang on a minute, slow your roll, it's not completely perfect, every diamond has some flaws, and with PC gaming it's pretty much twofold, the main ones really being value and complicatedness. I think that's a word. To be clear, it's not that complex, and it's certainly not that expensive either. I built a fully Fortnite-ready PC for around about £500 a couple of weeks ago, and once you're set up, then gaming is a breeze but the £450 next-gen consoles can absolutely smash out 4K 60 frames a second without too much of an issue these days. And no matter what anyone else tells you, buying an Xbox or PlayStation 5 and then just whacking in a disc is still the simplest and quickest way to play your games. But on PC, you don't have to pay for Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus, which is definitely a strong positive in my book. If you do want to learn a little bit more about the pros and cons of each platform, then I've already made a video dedicated to this. I guarantee you'll find it really helpful. Find it in the top right corner of your screen. But okay, let's say you have decided to join the PC Gamers Club. Congratulations, you won't regret it. But how do you actually go about getting a gaming PC? Well, you have three options. Either build it yourself, buy a pre-built, or buy a branded computer from someone like MSI or Acer. And again, this is a video in its own right, but the general consensus, myself included, is of course to build your own. And the reason for this is twofold. Firstly, it is usually cheaper, not necessarily at the time of filming because of the GPU shortage that we're going through, but hopefully this is temporary. And secondly, because you have true freedom to get whichever parts you like. Getting a pre-build is really good for those of you that just don't want to build their own, maybe you don't have the time or the confidence to attempt it, but the way I see it, education on what you're actually buying is only a good thing, and if something does go wrong, you'll have a much better idea of how to fix it if you've assembled it yourself. To see firsthand how easy it is to build a computer, you can actually find my full step-by-step -step build guide linked at the top round corner of your screen, which again makes the process very straightforward and simple for you. But of course you will actually need some PC components to assemble, so what is it that you need to buy? Firstly, and most importantly, you have the graphics card. And this component is the PC gamer's best friend, as it handles all of the visuals that you'll see on your screen, and it will dictate exactly how many frames a second you can get, and how good your games will look. Be sure to pump a very large chunk of your budget into this, but make sure you don't forget about part two, the processor, or the CPU. This works in tandem with your graphics card to keep your gameplay smooth, with a six core chip like a Ryzen 5 or Intel Core i5, pretty much offering the sweet spot for price to performance at the moment for gamers. You'll need to buy a compatible motherboard for this all to sit on. If you've gone for an AMD processor, you want to grab a B550 or X570 motherboard, whereas if you've gone for Intel, you should look at B560 or a Z590 motherboard. 16 gigabytes of memory, also known as RAM, is recommended, with speeds above 3000 megahertz being the gold standard. You will of course need somewhere to actually store your games, so grab yourself a PCIe Generation 3 SSD, as they're now very common and well-priced. Anything above 500 gigabytes will definitely do, 
but one terabyte and above is definitely the sweet spot for new builders. There's a couple of boring bits that you do need to consider as well, mainly your power supply, and depending on which processor you go for, you might need an additional CPU cooler too. Your power supply needs to have enough wattage to support your graphics card, so you can check their website for the spec that you'll be needing. And the same goes with the CPU cooler, except that here we're talking about TDP. Check what your processor outputs, and then buy something that can actually cope with the heat. It's very easy to get carried away with all of these components and not really know what to buy. To get maximum FPS, you want to have the best possible graphics card that you can afford, paired with a CPU that won't hold it back. And to achieve this, you will need to cut back elsewhere, and the best places to do this are as follows. Start with a CPU cooler. If you get one free with your processor, then use it. It is a really easy upgrade in the future, and if it's the difference between an RTX 3060 or an RTX 3070, then it should be a no-brainer to not get the CPU cooler and spend more on the more expensive graphics card. Same goes for your case, or the enclosure, the chassis. Get something for around about £50 and then chuck the rest towards something that is far more important. MSI have some cracking value options, with RGB fans and good airflow as standard. The same could be said for Fantex and Corsair. Heck, I've even had luck with the £30 case I bought off Amazon. Moving on, we have the power supply. You don't want to buy some really cheap crap off eBay, buy from a decent respectable brand like an EVGA or a Be Quiet, but at the same time, get the power supply that you need for your build. Don't go getting a 1000 watt PSU because your mate Alan on Discord has one. You need to get what you need, you need to make sure that it's quality, and then don't spend a penny more. Got all that? This is definitely information overload, I know, but this is the beginner's guide to PC gaming, everything that you need to know. But what about the raw gaming experience? How can I help in that area? Are there things that you're going to miss out on? What do you need to know? Find out after a quick word from our sponsor. Are you tired, quite literally, of staring at screens all day? Don't get me wrong, we love them on this channel, but too much screen time can actually start to cause you problems. This is exactly why I've recently started using glasses from Blueblocks, the sponsor of today's video. Blueblocks make some incredible glasses to combat excess blue light from phones, TVs, and yes, even gaming PCs. These super high quality lenses are available for those with and without a prescription, and there's over 40 styles to choose from. I think my favorite thing about these frames is actually that I can't really notice a difference when it comes to what I actually see through them, which is astounding, it's not what I expected. They did actually send me out a second pair as well, so be the judge, which one looks better? Which one should I wear as my daily? Let me know down in that comment section below. To look just like me, or hopefully a whole lot better, head over to blueblocks.com centric and use the promo code centric at checkout to get 20% off and free shipping worldwide. Back to gaming though, and the first thing that you should be aware of are the specifications that you need for a game to actually run. The minimum spec ain't gonna give you a great experience, but for many titles it should be passable, while the recommended specs should give you a great gaming session time and time again. A new graphics card will typically last you for around about 5 years or so, but as games are getting more and more demanding, a lot of PC gamers will change before that, often for a big release like Cyberpunk, which worked out really well now didn't it? Unlike on console, games are exclusively downloaded, not run from discs. It's very very simple, all you need to do is download Steam, Uplay, Epic Game, Origin, Bethesda, Ubisoft Connect, maybe 2K, very simple. Maybe discs were okay. Yeah, true story, it's pretty dumb. But the good news is that there's a brand new GOG Galaxy out there that can manage all of your games for you, and this is definitely worth checking out if you don't want to open all of these launches at the same time, because yes, that is a massive pain. There are some basic hotkeys that you can learn to get the most out of your gaming PC. Try these ones if you haven't already. Alt and Enter. This will make your game cycle between windowed and full screen mode. Alt and F4. This will close your current app or game, and is really useful if your game ever freezes. Alt and Tab. Cycle between your open applications, commonly used to go to maybe your browser from your game, and then back to your game. And then finally, we have Control, Shift, and Escape. This will open up the task manager, which you should set to open always on top, 
if you haven't already. In-game communications work pretty much as they do on console. You have your in-game chat, which you can actually now use in a whole bunch of titles to talk to other gamers on other platforms, which is pretty cool. Most PC gamers though will use Discord, and this works very similarly to something like Xbox Party Chat. You just open up a room and then connect to the chat, and then you have cross-game communications. Just like consoles are now starting to see, PC games do of course have a load of graphic settings that you can choose from. You should almost always set your resolution to be the same as your display, and then tailor the rest of it to get the frame rate that you're actually looking for. Aiming for 60 frames a second is probably going to be your best bet, but for multiplayer titles, 100 plus is optimal. If you're having difficulty understanding them, then both Nvidia's GeForce Experience and AMD's Radeon Software can help you choose the right settings, and they explain all of what they do if you're having trouble. At this point, you should be happily PC gaming, and you'll probably be a little bit smug if you built your PC yourself, but there is actually one extra thing that needs to be on your tick list, because a lot of people think that PC gaming is just loud. You've got fans, they're beyond, and it is just louder than consoles. But this actually doesn't have to be the case, and for a lot of people, it is honestly a one-click solution that would solve all of your problems, but a lot of people would just never know that this was a thing. The easiest way to check that your system is running as quietly as possible is to ensure all of your fans are plugged directly into your motherboard and then run the fan tuning software that comes on your motherboard manufacturer's website. Obviously, I can't guarantee that this is going to work wonders for everyone, but I would strongly wager that most people watching this right now will be blown away at the before versus after. Seriously, give it a go, it is a win-win situation. And that, I believe, is PC gaming in roughly 15 minutes. I really hope this video has been useful. If it was, please smash that like button and get subscribed. It helps out so much you honestly wouldn't believe. Let me know your thoughts down in that comment section below. What have I missed? What would you like more detail on? But if you do want more detail, you can find plenty more videos in the end screen. And if you've seen something in this video that catches your eye, then I'll try and leave as many Amazon affiliate links to everything featured in that description down below if you're interested in current pricing. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next one.